Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about the curious case of Peppy Martin. Okay, so Peppy Martin, she's a Kentucky politician who unsuccessfully ran in the uh, as a Republican gubernatorial nominee in 1999, which is governor. She was running for the governor. She was the Republican's choice to run against Paul Patton. Now, Peppy Martin, she was born in Bonneville, Hart County, under the, her maiden name was Josephine Ellen Martin, Josephine Ellen Martin, and so Josephine Ellen Martin is now Peppy, she changed her name to Peppy, and uh, there seems to be a little bit of that going around these days, but uh, Peppy Martin, she ran in the 1999 gubernatorial election, she won the Republican primary by beating uh, David Lynn Williams, who is not to be confused with the state senator, David L. Williams of Burksville. And she ran with Wanda Cornelius. So you had a dynamic, both female team in 1999. This was when uh, Gatewood Gabbard actually got 15% of the vote as a Reform Party candidate. So the part that I want to get to, it's, it's crazy reading about Pepe Martin in 1999 because you have all the same players, all the same people. They were pissed off at Pepe Martin because of a comment that she had made uh, on KET. In KET, they had said something about uh, the drug war. Gatewood Gabber said something about the drug war. And then Pepe Martin, she says, I will say that I am appalled as I have traveled the state of Kentucky to find that under Paul's lack of leadership during these four years that perhaps as much as 80% of the sheriffs in this state and 30% of the state police are involved in bootlegging hard drugs. Now, I'm going to say it again, 80% of the sheriff's department and 30% of the state police. That's 120 counties have their own sheriff. So 80% of them would be about 90-something sheriffs. You know, 80% is the vast majority. 30% of state police. That's still a lot. I mean, if, if we have a war on drugs, why are the police involved in running the drugs? And just uh, about, you know, 10 years ago or so, there was a big... Uh, media journalist coverage where they actually got the sheriff who was dealing in drugs. So they actually caught a guy. So I don't know if her numbers, they seem a bit exaggerated. And she said that it was street talk. But it's not to say that it's not possible. In fact, power and money invites corruption. So if you have the power and the uh, criminal inclination to go around beating people up and hurting them for nonviolent offenses, I think you have the capacity to do any evil in the world. You don't think violence is immoral? Do you think raping and murder and stealing is immoral? Uh, what about kidnapping? So, you know, if they're willing to use violence, then I don't believe that they have any moral authority for anything. Okay, so... That's what she said. 80% of the sheriffs in this state, 30% of the state police are involved in bootlegging hard drugs. 1999. Okay, so this was uh, at a, uh, on a forum uh, this week broadcast by KET. So this was on KET. So a lot of people got to hear her comments. And I'm reading this out of the Kentucky New Era, October 22, 1999. Now, I'm reading this Cincinnati Inquirer article, and they had got a quote from Boone County Sheriff Mike Helmig. He used to be a Democrat, changed to being a Republican. He had been sheriff, or had been a police officer for 17 years. He is still the sheriff of Boone County today. So this is 16 years later. 16 years later, we still have the same sheriff in Boone County who didn't give a crap when his own deputy murdered Samantha Ramsey. And so, you know... What moral authority does this guy have? He doesn't care about murder. And so, you know, if you don't mind putting violence on people, eh, that makes you immoral. If you don't care about someone who murders somebody else, you know, the, I don't see the morality. I don't see where the morality is. It almost seems like people are just right by the virtue of their power. Well, he is a cop and he did beat you up and got you in jail, so you must be guilty. Well, that that's not guilt. That's uh, either you're too weak or dumb to, you know, stand up for yourself. Or they have all the power, so you just comply with any of their craziness that they go with. Because if you did fight or defend yourself. So, you know, um, the, the, that's not the only person that I see either. So, uh, I read another article here, but also from the uh, Inquirer. And it said that, um, you know, her and Mitch McConnell weren't getting in, you know, uh, weren't getting along. 
Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell. Okay, so Mitch McConnell, this is 1999, 16 years ago. Actually, since I was born, 1984. So I was two years old when Mitch McConnell got into office. So ever since, you know, practically my entire life, Mitch McConnell has been in a position of power. And then, you know, the poor hillbillies say, let's put him back in. I don't think so. 90% of Kentuckians don't vote. Um, if the poor hillbillies did vote, we'd have a better society. So this is, uh, you got Mitch McConnell, you got Sheriff Helmig. We're talking about Elaine Chow. And then there's um, even uh, Damon Thayer. I saw Damon Thayer sort of jump in. And uh, he had actually said that she had a good speech at Fancy Farm. And um, Mitch McConnell pretended like Peppy Martin didn't exist. So did Paul Patton. So Paul Patton and Mitch McConnell played this stuck up, I'm better than you, you don't exist, who gives a crap about you uh, type of game. Which, you know, we see that today in 2015. Uh, but the, uh, the another thing that she had said, Peppy Martin, she said that uh, he has a Chinese connection. Now, his wife is Taiwanese. Now, he had used the attack of, you know, people being racist against his wife earlier, but it actually did come out that he does have a Taiwanese cocaine connection. His in-laws were caught trying to, you know, uh, traffic a bunch of kilos of cocaine in the Bahamas. So that was, you know, a big uh, a news piece that came out, but was not covered very much by Kentucky's media. In fact, Kentucky's media almost seemed to ignore that. Uh, so, anyways... Uh, usually McConnell in, delights in promoting Republicans, jabbing Democrats, but she didn't even mention um, Mr. Patton or Miss Martin, and then he left the stage before Mrs. Martin even spoke. And then when they asked him why he did that, he said that he's not going to comment on the governor's race this year. So that's, uh, you know, that's uh, pretty remarkable. Uh, you, you Supposedly you're not supposed to criticize other Republicans, uh, nobody got behind Peppy Martin, so she, her campaign kind of stalled. She wound up getting, you know, um, not very many votes, you know, just 10 or 20 percent of the vote. And, um, and and that's unfortunate because what if she was right? What if she was right that the uh, power and money and influence in Kentucky uh, did encourage uh, many sheriffs and Kentucky state police officers to engage in the drug trade? You know, who looks over the police? If the police are allowed to commit crimes and nobody says anything about the crimes that they commit, then they have no accountability. Therefore, they have unlimited absolute power. They have maximum power. And when a person has maximum power, nobody's checking or holding them accountable. I think it's very easy to think that corruption could happen. And uh, and we even see it, you know, with the uh, Sheriff Helmig, right? He was like, oh, how dare her? She doesn't know what she's talking about. But even in his own county, there was a murder caught on camera. Everybody saw it. He didn't say or do nothing about it. Um, and Mitch McConnell, he's been a dick like his whole his whole life. Uh, even in 1999, right, he was still a dick. Um, so, yeah, uh, the curious case of Peppy Martin, she, I haven't heard anything about her since this campaign uh, had happened. I only knew about it because I you know, just did some research about the governor's past governor's races. But that's a remarkable, you know, um, uh, uh, thing to say. That's a remarkable, you know, that's a very strong statement. 80% of sheriffs are engaged in bootlegging uh, hard drugs. Hard drugs. So not just, you know, cannabis, but heroin, crack, cocaine. Cocaine, like Mitch McConnell's in-laws in the Bahamas. So very fascinating, right, that whenever somebody alleges that there's corruption and drug dealing, he says, nuh-uh, and then 15 years later, it turns out that he is actually engaged in, uh, his in-laws, at least, were engaged in drug trafficking. So, Peppy Martin, I admire you. I don't know where you've gone, but I am glad that you said the things that you said. It made me think about some things, and, um, and you know, embarrassing for the Republicans that they didn't back you when you tell the truth. I think that's the biggest thing, actually. Russell, Russell Brand was pointing out the British election. After everybody had lost, they told the truth, except for the one winner, because the illusion of stability has to carry on. So, you know, running for office makes you a liar. So if you're telling the truth, that almost disqualifies you. Wait a second. Gatewood Galbraith, he's telling us the truth. Cynthia McKinney, they're, they're Ralph Nader, they're telling us the truth. Well, they are disqualified out of American politics because they're telling us the truth. How dare they tell us the truth? That's 
so fucked up. If telling the truth disqualify you from American politics, that's the problem with American politics right there. Um, telling the truth should be a prerequisite. All he tells the truth, he's a good, honest man. Vote for him. That's a good man. That's a good person. So, Occupy 2015. Go vote. May 19th.